Beyond being a real-time interactive compositing software, SMOD is above all a tool for video scenography, focusing on the video decor aspect of stage design. This is what interests us when creating new shows and projects. There are already some example projects provided with the software to help you understand how everything works. You can find them on the homepage under the Examples tab. For the rest of this tutorial, I'll create one from scratch with you. So here, I'll create a new show. This window that pops up is a preset window, which I won't go into detail about. Unlike a compo, a project needs to be saved in a specific location within your media directories. I'll save it in my SMOD files and give it a name. I press OK. And my project is created. Unlike a compo, a project opens up a lot of possibilities. This document allows us to work on multiple video outputs at once, simulate our stage, simulate our video projectors, work with other devices like lighting consoles, tracking system, and send content to LED structures. This opens up a lot of possibilities. And you'll notice that the interface doesn't change much from the compositing interface. In fact, I usually say there are three notable differences with the compositing interface. The first one is that here, in my viewport window, I have a drop-down menu that allows me to view specific objects. Here, I am viewing an object called Content Map, but I can switch to view an object called Stage. I'll go back to the Content Map object because I can see that in my Layers window, there is also a drop-down menu that lets me focus on objects like the Content Map, Stage, Show, Pipeline. And speaking of the pipeline, we have a new window at the bottom that takes the place of the timeline, though we still have access to a timeline editor here. This pipeline will be our guide to understand what's happening in a project. Here I noticed that there are already two objects created. One is called Content Map and the other is called Community Output. This directly refers to a video output that has already been created, named Community Output. This means that in my pipeline, I already see a video output and a first object. You can interpret the pipeline as a series of boxes, each having a specific role in processing the video stream, whether to distribute it, repeat it, or distort it, from our media upstream to our video outputs downstream. So the first thing we can do is understand what we are looking at. Here I have my content map object and there I have my video output. I see that in my viewport I'm currently viewing the content map. And while viewing content map, I see this test pattern with content test pattern written on it. To understand what's going on, I'll take a look at here what is in my show. I see that in this show object, I have a 2D layer content test pattern. And if I toggle its activation, I can see that it's indeed what I'm viewing in my content map object. I'll collapse the devices window to expand the layers window a bit. Here, I see that besides having access to opacity, I also have this content map object in the drop-down menu. In fact, this means that my content test pattern layer is rendered in this object called content map. And that's why I can see it when I look at the content map object, but I cannot see it when I look at the stage. We'll come back to what the stage is later. Back to content map. So now we are going to do our first video signal routing. For this, we'll go to the pipeline. Here, I'll simply tell my video output to send an element called content map. From there, if I visualize what will be outputted in this video output, I see the same thing. You see here, if I set not connected in my video output, it sends nothing. But if I tell it to send the content map, the routing is done, and so my video output will send the content test pattern. Just switch here to output mode to see this. So I'm going to leave output mode using the shortcut Ctrl Alt Shift W to explain that here in the show, you have to keep in mind that it's all about your content, your media, your compositions, your images, your video streams, etc. In short, I can distinguish between two main types of layers. Here, if I go to full project, I'll have layers that are content-based media that I create in the show, and I have layers that are more technical related to the pipeline. These technical layers will help me simulate video projectors, do video signal routing, and handle video signal repetition. All this will be created in the object called pipeline. Back to my show. 
So now, if I want to create a new compo, I'll be able to do so directly in the show. So if I right click in my show, I only have access to the 2D layers at the moment. I won't be able to create a 3D layer, because the content map, which are the elements I'm going to use to make my first video routing, only accepts 2D content. This doesn't mean I can't import 3D content, but I'd have to do it in a 3D composition. So here, if I create a compo, by right clicking on it, I'll have access to the 3D layer, the text layer, the shape layer, and the 2D layers. So it's this distinction between technical layers and content layers that will guide us through the rest of the tutorials.